if we are predestined, why preach the gospel? One of the common problems that people have with understanding predestination and election is that they, if we take the sovereign interpretation of it anyway, is that they don't understand the purpose of anything. Why make good choices? Why try to do a good thing? Why try to do anything? And obviously the most crucial of those being why preach the gospel? If, if God already knows who is going to be saved and chosen the saints from the foundation of the world and he's not going to fail to save his people, why preach the gospel at all? What, what difference does it make? Well, there's a simple practical answer and a slightly more philosophical, theologically complex answer. So the simple answer is that on the one hand, God has chosen us in him from the foundation of the world and the Bible says as much so we must conclude that it's true but then on the other hand we know that the Bible commands us to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature and teach the nation so we have the scriptural principles of sowing and reaping and the fields are ready to harvest so we must conclude also that this is also true because it's what the Bible says so then marrying these two things together we have a very simple principle at work here if we go out and preach the gospel to every creature, God will predestine according to his purpose. And in a way he already has, because the person who was waiting for you to give the gospel to get him saved was already waiting from the foundation of the world, but manifest at the point when you gave him the gospel. On the other hand, if we don't go out and give it, God's not going to choose people around us to be saved. So perhaps hearing that you say, well, if God has already chosen, those I would preach to then he's already determined that I shouldn't bother because I don't perhaps or I just didn't in, in whatever given situation well that's one way to look at it but a better way to look at it would be to say within yourself let's give him something good to write about so that's the simple answer but it doesn't shed light on why the preaching of the gospel is so necessary so that leads me into a slightly more complex answer the spreading of the gospel by preaching and not just, say, reading the Bible on its own or waiting for a mysterious vision or reasoning it in an intellectual debate, etc., is a very important component of the, the gospel of grace. So this idea that we get from Ephesians 2 that salvation is by grace through faith Christ has quickened us, it's not by works, it's not even of yourselves, Ephesians tells us, because it's God that has quickened us, or my own way of explaining that is to say that God fashioned our eternal life, our salvation in his hands, we, we didn't fashion it with our own hands. What is the relevance of this, you ask? Well, as, I, as you should know if you watch this channel often enough, grace is God's unmerited favour, the free undeserved gift. I've spoken about this in the series previously, that grace is the criteria for election. You, you didn't deserve to be saved. You didn't do anything to warrant being saved over your neighbour who isn't saved. And the whole concept of the gospel being shared with you is an important part of that grace. I perceive that a lot of easy believists, including my main supporting subscriber base, often emphasise verses about God and grace and faith and, and pivot the gospel around the work that Christ did and his death and, and his resurrection, his grace, with very little emphasis uh, on, on themselves, except for believing and receiving the free gift. And rightly so, obviously, that's what we believe. That's what easy believers and what free grace is, essentially. Whereas for a lot of Christians that we wouldn't associate with, they pivot the gospel around their testimonies, their visions, their near-death experiences and the miracles that they've seen. And if they do give any lip service to God, it's, it's all about how God enabled them to shine in their works and, and dangle their fruit before men. And particularly if you watched my second documentary with dealing with the hypocrites, I spent a lot of time rebuking sinless perfectionists because their personal testimonies are a very important part of their so-called gospel message or their manipulation because if you listen to their testimonies it sounds very swelling before men you know i turned from all of my sins 
or they went into a cabin in the woods and separated themselves from the world and they just read the bible without listening to men and it, it sounds very spiritual and even godly that they got all of their doctrine straight from the bible and they didn't need any of mortal man's influence and they they even try the god spoke to me line sometimes but therein lies their stumbling block that they think that they read the bible for themselves figured out what the gospel is by themselves you know with the help of the holy spirit they'll say and they surrendered themselves to uh, you know totally to the lord and shocker they believe in a works-based salvation now why is that well because if it's by grace and it's not of yourselves but if these people like Michaela Cooper or Jesse Morell or Mike Krakowski just read the Bible for themselves and they turned from all of their sins and they separated themselves and spent every waking hour reading the Bible apparently you lot just you just can't be bothered to do that you guys that are listening to me to give you the gospel or you're listening to me to explain the best you apparently you just can't be bothered to go and separate yourself in the woods and read it for yourself and figure it all out you know from their point of view that's not me saying that obviously well the problem is that then is that those guys those jesse morels the michaela coopers the mike Rakowskis of this world that's not salvation by grace it's it's of yourselves by definition you fashioned your salvation because you were prepared to put in the effort to do what's needed to be done to seek after God with all of your heart. When Paul said concerning righteousness, none seeks after God. And we could apply this in so many different scenarios. For example, there's there's a lot of people within the, the truth seeker movement. They dedicate their time to testing all things and trying to understand if we've been lied to about this, that and the other and politics and vaccines and evolution, organised religion and all this kind of stuff. But most of them will not come to the knowledge of truth concerning salvation because if they did, then arguably they could boast that they found the truth because they did all of this research and looked into all of this stuff and, you know, the sheeple just wouldn't do this, but then they understood that it's, you know, what, what the real deal is. Well, the problem is that's not grace. You merited that by doing the research that nobody else could be bothered to do. There are atheists who study all of the science and listen to all of these scientific debates and read about this and study that. And yet all of this achieves really is to solidify their confidence that Christianity is not true because Christianity, Christianity appears unscientific or God just has no necessity in creation. He doesn't, he, do, he doesn't need to exist for this to happen or that to happen. And if by some stretch they do get converted, it's probably by some unsaved work salvation apologist who is probably a liar and a fraud anyway, because otherwise the atheist and the apologist alike would be able to boast in their own scientific reasoning and swelling intellect because the whole thing is really an intellectual cockerel fight and the Christians just keep losing. Well, the problem is that, again, that's that's not grace. You using your intellect to figure out what the truth means. And then the last example I'll give is these theologian masters of divinity being churned out by the Bible, Bible College assembly line, which is a complete scam, but that's neither here nor there. The Calvinists and Catholics, for example, are being churned out by this machine. They think they're saved because they can write a university level thesis on why the word repent in Greek is to surrender your life and turn from your sins and all of that jazz. They think that they're going to heaven because they did all of this study figuring out the five doctrines of Calvinism or whatever. And of course, you are not because you can't seem to figure it out. And the fact that they can figure it out must mean that they're correct. You know, that, that's the way that they see it. In fact, some time ago, I got a comment, actually, with a 10-paragraph article that I didn't ask for in the comments, telling me about how doing the will of the Father for salvation was to do all of these works in the Sermon on the Mount. But then this bozo said that it's not about keeping them perfectly. Well, here's the problem with that. The Sermon on the Mount said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So clearly this person who wasted half an hour writing a dissertation, we could shut it down with one verse. But he, he thinks that because he's provided this compelling argument that he's right and I'm wrong and he's going to heaven. 
Rest assured, he was very disappointed by my lack of commitment to engage in a civilised and intellectual debate with him. Well, be disappointed, because you're not going to get an Oxford University debate out of me, frankly. But, of course, he thought he's going to heaven, because I'm, you know, look how smart I am. Okay, but that, again, that's not grace. Now, on the other hand, if you discovered the gospel because you heard it from somebody else that gave you the gospel, well, that's compatible with the election of grace because you obviously didn't go out and discover it by yourself because you're just so smart or whatever, or because you knew where to look or because you cross-examined every false prophet and gradually figured it all out, you know. Somebody like me or any other free grace channel or wherever you heard the gospel from, you know, whoever, somebody had to tell you that you were being lied to. Somebody had to point out to you that grace excludes works. Somebody had to tell you that Jesus should lose nothing, that he gives eternal life to, because even if you read the Bible quite a lot, for some reason, you just didn't figure it out for yourself, for some reason. You read John 6, but you still couldn't figure it out, for example. You were just left to your own devices. Now, with the internet nowadays, the dynamic is a bit different, because in many cases, you know, most of you, or at least all of you, or well, let's just say if I just target anybody out there who would say that they were converted because of something that they found on my channel, well, I didn't knock on your door unannounced. You technically found me, so obviously it does sort of mess up the dynamic a little bit. But you probably stumbled across my documentary or other material that I've done, either by accident or circumstantially, or because you searched for something because you were confused about it from even from reading the Bible yourself. And then reading the Bible for yourself didn't make you any less confused. Or maybe you just watched the documentary because it had a catchy title and it confused you when you first saw the title. Repent of sins is a false gospel. What do you mean repent of sins is a false gospel? And so, yes, there is an aspect to that to some extent. You did have to spend some time watching the film or watching this video or watching that video but that's obviously, that's one video out of however many hundreds and hundreds or thousands of videos are feeding you with false information as well, okay? So even if a video somewhere is giving you the correct gospel, and let's say that it gets 100,000 views, that's quite a lot. But given how many millions of Christians there are, most of them will never see that. And most viewers will reject it anyway. So you could just as easily have been one of the people that were deceived and permanently deceived by a false gospel. Or you could have spent thousands of hours looking at this Christian content and that Christian content and spent many, many a time studying the Bible, but still you've only ever been exposed to Lordship Salvation. You, you could have been one of those people. So in conclusion, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you, as I think I've probably said this before, but you didn't come to the knowledge of truth because you were very investigative or inquisitive or logical or academic in, in a way the truth found you and that's that's amidst all the lies that satan was pelting you with and bombarding you with which he still does to this day for many of you you know all of these different gospels and interpretations and so on so the idea of preaching the gospel to people is not antithetical to election or predestination it, it's the very mechanism of how it works that the shepherd left the 99 to find the one or the woman gave everything that she had to find the lost coin you being the lost coin in that illustration not not the woman because it's grace it's undeserved it's the unmerited favor of god you didn't earn it you didn't keep it you didn't deserve it and you didn't even figure it out for yourself because if you would have figured it out for yourself loads of us would have this story about how we just read the bible and figured it out but we don't. The people who have that testimony are the ones that believe in a works-based salvation and they disagree with each other about this doctrine and that doctrine. So it's one of those statements, you know, I just read the Bible for myself. It sounds super pious and it sounds super holier than thou, but it's not grace, okay? You figured it out because you're better than everybody else. That's what it comes down to. But if the gospel was just given unto you, whether somebody knocked at your door or you just circumstantially found a video that happened to give you the right information after all the videos that you've watched that gave you the wrong information, well, at least then you didn't boast. The, the truth was given to you, you didn't discover it for yourself. So that's grace. It, it's perfectly compatible with the election of grace, because as, as, as I explained before, grace is the criteria for election.